In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to the firstborn son, and left him in bridal clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the field, keeping a watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born in this day, in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child black and brought them clothes, and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favored. When the angels had left them and born into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord had made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a child lying in the manger. The Gospel of the Lord. Tonight is your answer. 
Most of us get only sympathy. We might talk to someone, get convinced by attitudes like, oh, there's a silver lining somewhere, and then become subjected to a barrage of advice we know to be a waste of time. Sympathy is nice, but it's not enough. Empathy, on the other hand, means that someone does understand, that someone does know what I am going through, and know you are not alone. That, my friend, is why tonight is your answer. What's happening here in this church tonight and throughout the world? Jesus was there. That's too easy. It is Jesus' birthday, yes. But it's actually a lot more than that. Christmas. More than being the birthday of Jesus. It's when God became a baby. Christmas highlights the first of two central truths in Christianity. The incarnation of God taking upon himself a human life. We read in John Gospel, for instance, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Elsewhere, St. Paul wrote, in the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman. In the story of creation in Genesis, God said that each thing he made was called good. But the making of the human person was very good. Even more than the brightest star or the most colorful nebula, the child, the woman, the man carried a word far greater. You and I, would you believe it, are the crowning work of creation. God did not come in the form of thunder and lightning, or some celestial portent, or by way of a mass and false religious experience. No. He came as one of us. At Christmas, God became a peer to the human race. Born by man with man to dwell. Jesus our Emmanuel. In the soft cries of a Jewish boy, in the backwater of the Roman Empire some 2,000 years ago, God's voice was joined with ours. God cried our hearts. God laughed our laughs. God sorrowed our sorrows. God rejoiced in our doors. God became one of us. As passing Christians, we believe this to be so true that repeated attempts to downplay the humanity of Jesus the God-man were left one by one for the national swift and severe. True God and true man. By all rights, Mary should have been served by Elizabeth, traveled in a caravan at Pierre Blood and lodged at the choicest hotel. But no. Seeing the plight of humanity, God will, instead, to be subject to see the brutal politics, an endangered pregnancy, and to have a respect home a cave weeping with the smell of power and sleep, and receive a delegation of nobody, shepherds. And like you and me, the God man Jesus experienced the full range of human emotion. He rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. He was tempted in the desert. He was angry with the money changers in the temple. He loved the rich young man. 
He wept when his friend Lazarus died. His heart was torn at seeing his people without a caretaker. He was afraid on the night before the trial, and he was in desolation when he was crucified. Excusing himself from no human experience, the God-man, Jesus, endured even death. In point of fact, God took on a human body precisely so that he too would experience human death. Christmas was planned with Easter in mind. Christmas is the empathy of God. During the period of the Old Testament, we took it out of faith that God understood our struggle and saw coming because God knows our sin. With Christmas, we know this to be true because what makes us Christian is exactly the belief that God will be committed with us by taking upon himself flesh and blood, mind and soul, and the ups and downs of human life. That's the true man side of the equation. The true God side of the equation comes into clear focus on Good Friday. Our with the suffering he bore. Our with the sorrows he carried. Upon him lies the tidings that makes us whole, and by his wounds we are healed. What is hard to say about you and me? It means that you and I, whether we're rich or poor, whether we're Asian or African or European or native, whether we're gay or straight, whether we are disabled or not, unborn or elderly, whether we are convicts or victim or survivor, it means that each of us is worth that much that God will become one of us just so that God could say, I am with you because I love you. See, I really became a baby. So my friends, whatever you're going to do at home, at work, or when the fire is in your soul, Christ our God is with you. But I know what you are thinking. Why does life hurt so much? It hurts because we love. Without love, those words from our spouse wouldn't be so cutting. Without love, the death of our children wouldn't be so painful. Without love, we wouldn't miss our family and friends who are shipped off to Afghanistan. Love, strangely enough, is what makes life hurt. At the same time, if we have the choice of a love that hurts versus a loveless world, most of us, I'm sure, would still pick love. And this is just what God has done. God is love, and by His birth, God will to love to the point of being hurt. So that you can see in Jesus' gaze just how far God went to prove his love. Whatever is happening with you, don't be afraid to throw yourself in God's arms. Open now to receive your joy and sorrow, your hopes and griefs, your living, and yes even your dying. The hopes and fears of all the year are met in thee tonight. The paradox of Christmas is that God doesn't take away our pain. Instead, he endures it. The incarnation of the eternal word of the Son endures even to the night. Just as our lady, our mother, placed Christ gently into her hands, do we all need Christ and forget him 
and this is the Quran. When you hear the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, know that our true God is also true man, and say, Amen. Take and receive Christ and receive joy, our flesh and blood. Join yourself to him who would join to us. Give him your life, whose life was given for you. Glory to Christ our God, and to the age of the Lord. Amen.